People have a tendency to respect more a negative opinion than a positive one. Uh, why that exactly is, I don't know. I'd say that it has something to do with self-preservation. Uh, we're very wary of snake oil salesmen. We don't want to be sold a line, something that's too good to be true. And so a negative opinion can appear as though it's the cautious opinion, and so the safer road traveled in that case. But because it's become known as the wiser opinion, I think people will adopt negative opinions sometimes just to be popular, just to appear wise, when that is not actually true or accurate. And none more so than this idea that if you come to live and work in Japan, that you're killing your career. It's kind of accepted as a truism that were it to be for teaching or whatever else, you come over and you'll waste your years away here and that you should, conventional wisdom suggests you should go back, get a real job and don't, don't waste your time. And now that I've been here a while, seven years, I can, I can definitively say that I don't agree with that at all for a number of different paths that are available to you. So the elephant in the room, the easy one to address and I think most receives the most criticism would be teaching and everybody says that you're going to jump around schools uh, the, the toil of it is going to wear you out you're going to become cynical and there's no real path upwards for you but couldn't be farther from the truth uh, now that I've been here and I've seen the different options that are available to you uh, one of which is direct hire Direct hire immediately above these entry-level ikai was that you might work for is going to net you a lot more money, but people might say then, oh, well, that's not really a career. That's just your first step up. From there, if you were to get further education, say you did distance education and you got yourself a master's in linguistics or TESOL, then you're perfectly eligible to work in a university here, which can be a full career for you. I know several university professors in Japan and they do really really well for themselves they have a house they support a family they do the whole thing and then that's just one avenue if you're thinking to yourself oh I don't want to do linguistics uh, and you don't want to have a master's necessarily you could teach in a Japanese private school here once you'd accumulated some experience and it would as well be viable for a career they're gonna pay you what would be considered a great salary again that you could get bumped up year after year you'll have full benefits from the private school healthcare all that good stuff and subsidization of your pension that's the one i wanted to remember and i know people who have worked at private schools slowly moving up in them for over 15 years and these are not people who are stagnant they're not working there because it's the only option that they have it's because it's viable and they've seen their wages increase and there's great job security I mean 15 years <laughs> if, they, they, if that's not secure I don't know what is so teaching I've seen has whether it's an international school or you want to get a master's or you want to teach at a private school there's so many options to actually turn the most highly criticized path that people might come over here for into a career now, in addition to that, like let's not let's say that, oh, well, I don't want to necessarily make teaching a career for myself. Something that I like to refer to is this idea that everybody's probably heard discussed in school, the way that emerging job markets are changing, the way that when you go to school now to get a degree, very often it's the case that by the end of that degree, what you've studied is outdated, but not only that, more in a positive side of things, that there's many new jobs created by the end of finishing your degree that didn't exist when you started. There is a great guy I talked to recently. Uh, he did like an audit of my channel for like digital marketing recently. Great guy. Uh, and he was talking about that, how everything that he does now, uh, he works out of Vancouver. Everything he does, he worked for Audi for like five years. Good, solid career that he's had. He says that everything that he learned by the time he finished, the vast majority was dated. So what I mean to say with this particularly is that new jobs are coming out all the time. And kind of piggybacking on top of that, what I would call like the new education, where so many companies don't care about a piece of paper anymore. They have a practical function that they need fulfilled 
that doesn't matter what prestigious place or pin was dropped on the planet where you got your degree from. And so if you can self-educate, then you can get access to these kind of jobs. Uh, be that marketing that you could do distance education, digital marketing kind of thing, uh, be that software development, be that number of things that I'm sure just like I can't possibly know about because I haven't done all the research, but right there, if you're looking at software development or marketing, these are two fields that have, even within them, a large variety of different options that you could have. And they're open to anyone who has access to the internet and time to educate themselves. So I have definitely come to the opinion now that there isn't a difficult path. It's more a question of which path do you want to go down while you're here. Now, things that I'd piggyback on top of piggybacking here is that, of course, you're going to be better off and you're probably going to be able to smash down a lot doors much easier if you learn the language. I think that's a fantastic thing to do. You're living in Japan and you'll be much better off for it. But I really wanted to kind of debunk this idea that you come over here and whether it's for teaching or something else that you'll not be able to make a career out of it because it's simply not true. Uh, another element is this idea that you, you start with teaching or you start with this degree or you do this and then it can evolve into something else. Uh, say for example, you want to do a business. Well, there's lots of jobs that pay so well in Japan that this doesn't need to be your end all that you would ever aspire to, but you could do it to make enough money, to pay the bills, to have enough free time to work on your passion, to work on your business, whatever that may be. Uh, perhaps you're a photographer, uh, perhaps you're a videographer. And one of those, for example, here's another job. It's not one where I grew up and I thought, oh, my whole life I would like to do that. But it could definitely provide this basis for you is it's quite popular in Japan uh, to have weddings presided over by a foreigner because although the Japanese are not Christian religious, they do appreciate the Christian ceremony of the wedding, which I actually think a lot of people in the West do the, do the same. They're not religious, but they're like, I'm going to do a big, cool church wedding with all what would be perceived as a Christian tradition. If you do this job in Japan, you can make somewhere near, I mean, working very minimally, you can make between like $2,500 to $3,000 a month, which would give you like this base of your bills are paid, your rent is paid, but you only have to work something like 11 days a month to, to make that base level pay. And as I say, you would then be able to work on whatever other thing that you needed to focus so much time on to be successful in. Say, for example, you want to be an author. Maybe you want to write. Well, now you're going to have a lot of time to write that book. So I would appeal to people in this that if you want to come over and get your feet wet, teach, do whatever else, do whatever it is, do the chapel thing, whatever it is that gets you over to Japan, and don't lose heart or don't give in to these, I think, popularly negative opinions that say that this can then never evolve into anything and that you'll, you'll burn out. Uh, I think the inscription, what did the person I had was like on one of, one of my most recent videos, it was, he says, you're gonna age out. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, you don't know. I mean, to say that shows me, I know now, that I've seen so many opportunities around me. When people say that, it actually speaks to a lack of wisdom, a lack of experience, as opposed to an accumulation of it. Well, I hope you like this video. I hope it was, uh, I hope it was inspiring for people who've kind of felt anxious about this, because I know that a lot of people would, because they're hesitant now. Oh, I, if I go and do that, what a waste of time. And it's an absolute tragedy because living in a foreign country is amazing. Uh, exposing yourself to another language that you could potentially teach is so cool. Um, I talked recently in a video about how you create such an international structure of friends here. It is such an incredible experience to have to come over. And is, as I say, it's a tragedy that people would discourage you to do so. Decide for yourself. Trust this video. I'm confident in giving you this information. <laughs> well, I hope you like this. Uh, if you did, please do smash that like button. Smash it. Uh, hit the bell notification. Subscribe if you want to get videos. Let known that videos are going live on the channel the moment that they're uploaded. Uh, if you would, 
please do consider supporting me on Patreon. I appreciate that a great amount. And all the information for that is down below. I won't wax poetic on all the things that are available there. You guys are awesome. The clock has run out, and I'll catch you in the next video.